हेलो माय यंग स्टूडेंट्स माय यंग लर्नर्स माय व्यूअर्स आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल एंड यू ऑल आर फाइन एंड सेफ एट होम आई वेलकम यू टू दिस इंग्लिश क्लास एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ पोएम फ्रॉम योर क्लास नाइन टेक्स्ट बुक एंड द नेम ऑफ द पोएम इज अ लेजेंड ऑफ द नॉर्थ लैंड दिस पोएम इज फ्रॉम यूनिट फाइव from your textbook beehive my dear students as the title suggests a legend of the north land the title itself suggests that it is a story a legend of the north land which part of the country which part of the world it is the north land now before we go to analyze the poem let me tell you something about the poet the name of the poet is fabicary and she was born on 4th september 1824 in mount healthy ohio united states she is an american poet and along with her sister alice carey she co-published poems in 1849 later on they got their volumes published of their own after their death in 1970 1871 sorry joint anthologies of the sisters unpublished poems were also compiled after their death in 1871 joint anthologies of the sisters unpublished poems were also compiled now let us go on to the poem this poem is actually a ballad and what is a ballad a poem narrating a story in short stanzas this poem is written in 16 stanzas with four lines in each stanza it is a part of a folk culture that is a traditional stories which are passed on from one generation to another generation in our indian context also we have seen there are several folklores several folk tales which are narrated from one generation to another generation one generation tra uh, uh, transfers it to the other generation in terms of giving certain stories talking about the values talking about the heritage culture and everything now folk means regional people right and lore means story so from here we get to know that it is a part of a folk culture of northland and you see the title title is a legend legend means story which is historical and is passed on from one generation to another generation now northland title also has the mention of the name northland northland area which is near north pole where daytime is very less and during winters right and it is found that it is quite cold during the winters now we have to see the setting it is in northland which is cold polar region including greenland northern european europe and siberia the days are very short nights are long snow covered use of reindeer to tie to the sledges for the use of the people means that here you will find a typical setting in the entire poem as i said it is a story so you'll find there is a particular setup in setting in this poem and what is it that you'll find certain typical animal right what is that it's reindeer mention of reindeer is there and the place is very cold it is snow covered and you will even find the mention of children who are wearing very heavy woolen clothes just they look like the pair a uh, bear cups now as i said this is a story so we also have to know what are the characters in this we have to read about the character saint peter who is saint peter in this poem he is a, an apostle apostle a disciple a follower of jesus christ and you'll find another character that is old woman here and there is another character that is woodpecker 
and it's quite interesting to read this poem because you also get some very important message through this poem we'll also be discussing about the poetic devices the rhyming scheme the rhyming pair and all the other devices now let us read the poem a legend of the northland as i mentioned this is a story and it is the setting is in the north land that is in the northern pole of our uh, earth right it is the place surrounding northern pole the poem goes is this way away away in the north land where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through from the lines of the poem you can find out you can guess or you can make out that the place is described here and how the place is described it is far far away from the northland and this the place has certain typical characteristic and what is that the hours of the day are few and the nights are long in winter and they cannot sleep them through that means the light nights are so long that they get tired of sleeping the the hours are so long where they harness the swift reindeer as i mentioned in the introductory part also that we find very uh, typical kind of uh, animal in these regions and that is reindeer and what do they do they are tied to the sledges and these sledges are used for carrying the people from one place to another especially the children the elderly people who cannot walk who cannot really manage on these snow covered areas they are they use sledges so they are tied to the sledges and it when it snows you can see the picture also that there is uh, the place is covered with snow and the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes so how are the children described here they are looking so funny in their furry clothes furry clothes means the clothes which are completely uh, uh, they are covered with fur right so th they are furry in nature the word has come from fur so they are completely covered the clothes are completely covered with fur and they in that uh, they appear to be just like bears cubs they tell them a curious story now who are they here the people the elderly people as i said this is Uh, the stories are narrated from one generation to another generation so here we get to know that the people the elderly people they are narrating to the children right and what do they tell they tell them a curious story what is this curious story i don't believe it's true who is i here the poet the poet says that i don't believe it's true this here it's 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 an old english so i don't believe it's true and yet you may learn a lesson if i tell the tale to you that means the poet wants us that the readers to to uh, accept that yes the poet was also not very sure about the authenticity of the tale but wants us to learn a lesson from this poem from this story when the poet is ready to tell us this story now how do we uh, really start a story you must have heard you must have read several folk tales and the very common way of starting any folk tale is once upon a time so here also the poet starts like a story and how it's it's begin you see once when the good saint peter as i said there is an important character here saint peter who is a disciple of of jesus christ and when the good saint peter lived in the world below what does it mean lived in the world below means he had been sent by the god to be on earth and spread the message be a messenger of god and spread good words to the people good values to the people and teach them morals teach them uh, preach them right these saints they actually come they take birth to preach to give good messages to the people so that this earth is having no miseries no problems and people remain happy and walked about in preaching just as he did you know 
and here we find that saint peter was the one who used to preach in that place once what happened he came to the door of a cottage in traveling round the earth as i said he was sent to uh, to the earth by god and he was just moving around from door to door and he was traveling round the earth where a little woman was making cakes and baking them on the hearth now here you see that uh, you'll find that now uh, saint peter has reached certain place and where is it he has reached to a place where a little woman was baking some cakes in her fireplace you can see the hearth and being faint with fasting he had not taken any food and it has been so long for him to be without food and keep moving so he was badly in need of food and being faint with fasting for the day was almost done it was almost uh, the day was almost over and it was time he was feeling so uh, so hungry that he immediately wanted something to eat he asked her her here means the woman the old woman the uh, uh, that little woman he asked her from her store of for from her store of cakes to give him a little single one what what did he ask her to give he asked her to give a small single piece of cake that she had baked what was the reply of that woman so she made a very little cake but as it baking lay she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away now you see what was going on in the mind of that woman do you think from these lines you can say that she immediately and very eagerly she was offering this cake in a very good mood she was offering this cake to the saint no perhaps no and the moment she had she was ready with the uh, cake that was baked by her she looked at it and she gave a thought and what was that thought that this cake perhaps is too big to give away i shouldn't give this big cake to this saint therefore she needed another what did she do she un uh, once again she needed she mixed the flour and uh, whatever mixture she had to prepare she needed everything and again the everything was ready to be baked and this time she thought that she would be baking a smaller one and still a small smaller one but it looked when she turned it over as large as the first had done now what had happened initially she had uh, she was ready to serve one but she found it was too big so she ref she uh, refused it to herself that no i will not give then she baked another one same she found it to be the same of the same size then again what was there in the mind then she took a tiny scrap of dough and rolled and rolled it flat and baked it thin as a wafer but she couldn't part with that now second time also she did not she was not convinced uh, to give that cake piece of cake also then what did she do she took another uh, another one and she started another dough and she started rolling it and rolling it and rolling it and she just flattened it and she made it as flat as a wafer as thin as a wafer thinking that it would be it would turn out to be a very small and a very thin piece of cake for she said my cakes that seem too small when i eat of them myself she says that when i eat these cakes appear to be too small but when i have to give it away then they appear to be so big are yet too large to give away but when i have to give it they appear to be so big so she finally decided that no i will not give and she kept it on the shelf she put it put them all on the shelf now what happened then good saint peter grew angry as you know saint peter was badly hungry and he was thinking he was expecting something some good uh, piece of cake from this uh, little woman but to his surprise she had not come up with any kind of 
offer and instead what did she do she whatever she had prepared she placed it back at the on the shelf and this made the peter very angry and as he was hungry and was almost faint faint means he was even feeling very weak also and he just could not uh, accept this kind of attitude from the women and surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint and this kind of uh, treatment uh, given by the women towards the saint was absolutely unexpected and this was enough for uh, the saint to get angry provoke a saint means to make him angry and he said in his anger he was completely in his uh, his furious now and he said you are far too selfish now the uh, the uh, the saint is now very upset and he just speaks his mind that he says you are far too foolish to dwell in a human form you see the kind of uh, language he uses here to dwell in a human form that means you don't deserve to be human being human beings are supposed to show some mercy and they are always ready they should be ready to help anyone who is in need and you are so selfish you don't deserve to be a human being you don't deserve to remain to exist on this earth in the human form to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm and god has given you everything you are given food you are given a shelter you are even given fire to keep you warm see my dear children here you must be thinking why fire because in those places because it remains very cold and each and every house they have got their fireplace and to keep the entire house warm and even in our country also the places where the temperature remains very low during the winter season people have people have to use these Uh, the, uh, the fire in a very productive way right they take help of fire to warm themselves and these things we are blessed with by god we are blessed with food we are blessed with shelter we are even provided warm clothes we are given f- we are provided fire and who all has who all has done it it's because of the blessings of god and somebody who is a me- disciple of Jesus Christ he finds such people existing on this earth they de- don't deserve to be human beings they don't deserve to exist here and he says that he wants to make her realize that you are given food you are given shelter you are given fire all the facilities all the comforts and you you don't have even this much uh, uh, faith in god that you will be helping somebody who is in need now you shall build as the birds do now he is angry and in his anger what does he do he just cursed her and in what way he cursed that okay from today you will be just like you will be doing just like the birds do and what do the birds do shall and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood you must have seen a very uh, typical kind of bird uh, named as woodpecker you can see in the visual also what does it do it keeps boring it keeps tapping on the dry wood to get some food and the food the amount of food it gets it's so less so the poet here wants to uh, convey to us to readers through this Uh, 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 through the uh, saint peter that we people if we don't understand the message of god then perhaps we should be ready for the punishment now here is the punishment for the for this little woman and what is the punishment what is the curse that she is she has to go through that you will be just like a bird now and you will be getting very less food and for that also you'll be doing s- something which is which is uh, which takes lot of time you have to keep boring you have to keep tapping on the dry wood to get some kind of some little bit of food then up she went through the chimney never speaking a word 
After this, the bird went. She turned out to be a woodpecker, and she reached top on the chimney, and she did not even uh, speak a word. And out of the top flew a woodpecker, for she was changed to a bird. And what was the curse that was given? That you will be turned into a bird, and you will you will keep doing this because you did not give food to somebody who was in need of that who was badly hungry and you did not understand the feeling of that person and you perhaps she could not recognize and had she recognized so who knows whether she would have given or not what kind of mentality she has she was really very miser and she she was not a good human being she didn't have the good qualities the good virtues the good values of a human being what one should possess and out of the top flew a woodpecker for the for she was changed to a bird who is she the little woman she had a scarlet cap on her head the only thing that she had now what was kind of appearance that she had she turned out to be a bird and this bird had a dark red color cap on her head and she was left that was the uh, left the same but all the rest of her clothes were burnt black as a coal in the flame you can see when we burn something the, the, it turns out to be Uh, just as black as coal and her color except the cap except that uh, bright red color cap the rest of the body was completely black black right and every country school boy and after this what happened is that whosoever country here means the village the rural place right rural area so here school boy or you can say any school going child found this woodpecker doing the same has seen her in the wood where she lives in the trees till this very day till now you'll find this woodpecker doing the same what what was she found doing she was found doing boring and boring for food she had refused to give food to somebody and now you see how she has to repay she was turned to uh, she was turned into a woodpecker and not only that the food which she had refused she has to work so hard she has to work so hard for so long to get that small amount of food for herself so what the story is over the story is completed right but the thing is that it's such a simple story but the message is so loud and clear and what is that that if we refuse to help somebody then we have to be ready for the curse we have to be ready for the punishment so what is the message that we have we get is what is the lesson that we get that if we find anybody in need we should not hesitate to help that person always be ready to help anyone who is in need don't think about the uh, outcome don't think about the uh, result of it don't think about what you will get in return but you should help everyone who is in need and if you get a chance it is always said that you should thank god that if you get a chance to help somebody you should do it god has given you a chance a golden opportunity to help somebody this little woman got a chance got an opportunity to help this saint by giving him food he did not ask for anything else he just wanted a piece of cake that she did not understand and you see what she has to go through throughout her life now let us see the other aspects of the poem the rhyming scheme if you see the lines of the poem if you refer to your text you'll find the rhyming scheme is a b c b how do we find out i think by now you all know what how we can look into the uh, rhyming scheme you see the last word of the first line the last word of the first line is northland the last word of the second line is few 
the last word of third line is winter so you if you see these three words they don't rhyme but if you see the fourth one it rhymes with the second so that is the reason we have seen the rhyming scheme to be a b c b this is how we find out work out on rhyming scheme then we have rhyming pairs also you have a textual question also where you uh, are supposed to find out the rhyming pairs i have found three for you rest you can do it right rhyming pairs few through so last sound when we say rhyming pair how do we find out we see the uh, the final sound of the word so we see few through so u sound is the final sound that is being repeated or you can say that is rhyming snows clothes so note the last sound that is again rhyming so this is how you will find out various rhyming pairs this poem is full of rhyming pairs you can work out on that and as i have already mentioned about the rhyming scheme so it will help you to find out the rhyming pairs now the poetic devices the very first poetic device that you will find is alliteration again this poem has got several uh, examples of alliteration but what is alliteration earlier also we have talked about it so what is alliteration alliteration is repetition of the initial consonant sound in two or more close words now you can see stanza 1 refer to stanza 1 you will find that they them here the sound is repeated so it is an example of alliteration similarly in stanza 6 you will find faint fasting so the sound f is repeated right then in stanza 10 you have seem small so initial sound is s and it is again repeated and in stanza 13 you have build birds by boring so all these examples you'll find b sound is repeated i have just given you some examples i would like you to work out on this as it is very simple you just have to see the initial sound of the words and then you have to see they they should not be at two distant uh, places they should be close enough right so those pairs you have to take out those words you have to take out to find out for the examples of alliteration the second poetic device we have is repetition now what is repetition any word or sentence repeated to lay emphasis on now in stanza 1 you will see away away that means when it is talking about quite a distance right so here we see that anything this particular poetic device is used to lay emphasis on certain aspect right on certain uh, point like here we want to show that it is quite a distance right then boring boring and boring you have seen that those lines in stanza 13 and stanza 16 similarly in stanza 9 also you'll find the word rolled so again it is showing that the intensity of that work how how long she has to do that boring and boring and boring so you have to even read it in that if i say just boring 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 you won't get the effect of it so when you see repetition even the way you read out that also gives an impact that also has an impact and that also has uh, a, an importance here right so boring and boring and boring that means it's showing that she'll keep on doing that work so tiring work right next is enjambment this is another uh, type of poetic device it's quite interesting to note here i don't know whether you have uh, read it earlier or not but i would like to explain it to you that uh, in this particular poem you'll find several such lines where the the role of punctuation comes into picture here we have seen that the lines uh some of the lines end with a comma or a semicolon or a full stop but we'll find some of the lines which end with no punctuation there is no use of any punctuation say one line goes the second line again you'll find it has it ends that means first line goes and it continues in the second line and ends with a punctuation that is called as enjambment and you have several such examples here i have 
given some examples here stanza 1 you can refer to stanza 1 line 3 and 4 you can see and the rights and the nights are so long in winter there is no uh, punctuation after winter so you'll find that uh, such is an example of enjambment similarly in stanza 2 line 1 2 3 4 again you will find that there is no punctuation after line 1 again you will find no punctuation after line 3 there is punctuation after line 2 and after line 4 so such uh, this is an example of enjambment a kind of poetic device now the next poetic device we can see is simile what is simile simile is comparison comparison now even metaphor is also comparison but simile when we say again it is using like and as that means a and b if we are comparing two things a and b then we'll say a is like b or a is as b right so here we see that like and as has been used in the poem stanza two and the children look like bears cups so here we are the children are not bears cups but they look like so there is a comparison here similarly in stanza 9 you will find and baked it thin as a wafer wafer you know you must have seen wafer it's so thin right so she baked that cake in such a way that it was as thin as a wafer in stanza 15 again we find that the appearance of the bird black as a coal in the flame the except the cap the rest of the part of the body was compared with the black color of the coal right so these are the examples of simile we also have imagery in this poem what do you mean by imagery anything that is related to sensory images and it helps the readers to visualize authors writings now in more realistic manner what it, what does it mean that sometimes there are certain words which are basically describing some kind of movement or they are describing some kind of sound they are describing some kind of particular visual here in this poem we have seen that uh, there is a visual imagery how we can say visual imagery she's baking cake so from there itself you get an image imagery of something being baked right that becomes a visual imagery sound imagery also boring and boring boring means actually tapping tapping on a tree so it produces a sound it is not silently done right it produces a sound so again when the readers read it they find they can immediately form a kind of uh, visual or you can say that there you you can see that some kind of sound immediately some kind of sound is created in readers mind and that helps the readers to understand the author's writing author's way of expressing what the author wants to say then we have another one called anaphora anaphora again i think it is a, a new concept for you new poetic device and what is it it's a repetition of the word or phrase in the successive lines stanza 9 you will find rolled in uh, and rolled and rolled and baked these are repeated in stanza 12 again you have to dwell to have these are repeated so the in the first one and is repeated in stanza 9 and in stanza 12 you'll find two is repeated here so this is an example of anaphora now let us quickly discuss we have already read the poem quickly discuss what is the theme very uh, uh, very clearly mentioned uh, after reading the story you must have understood that this theme is that greed and selfishness can anger annoy even a saint you, you should not think that saint, the, they will never uh, consider these feelings. Yes, they can even annoy the saint. What is the tone? Tone is preachy. Yes, the poet wants here to preach something through the character Saint Peter. right? And it is a very sacred and pious poem. Because it is giving a very sacred message to the human beings. And what is the message that the poet wants to give? That... We, it's a kind of warning also to the people that those who are selfish 
might be punished so with the presence of the supernatural element we should be always careful that we uh, the, it's a warning to us that we should we people if we get a chance to help somebody we should not at that time we should not be selfish we should come uh, uh, come out with hel with uh, uh, helping hand we should be ready to extend all sorts of uh, help to that person whosoever is in need now let us see some of the questions from your textbook which country or countries do you think the northland refers to as already mentioned it refers to the places which is close to north pole you will find some european countries you will find russia you will find siberia and all right so you just work out sit with your map you can find out what did saint peter ask the old lady for and what was lady's reaction he asked for a piece of cake as he was badly hungry and the day was almost over so he was in need of something to eat and what was lady's reaction she was not very uh, generous she did not act generously and she uh, kind of hesitant to give some kind of help how did he punish her you know what happened how was he pun how was uh, the woman punished how did he punish her he punished her by changing her by making her turn into a bird that is also a woodpecker who would keep boring and boring for very scanty food how does the woodpecker get her food by tapping on dry wood to get some food do you think that the old lady would have been so ungenerous if she had known who saint peter really was what would she have done then do you think she would have shown some kind of generosity perhaps no this is up to you you may say yes but what the poet uh, the poem says is that perhaps she wouldn't have shown the same kind of uh, attitude or same same kind of uh, uh, no generosity she was not at all generous to uh, extend any kind of help to the saint is this a true story as we have already read that these are not the true stories and even in the poem also poet has mentioned that maybe it is not true i don't think it is true but if i tell you then we will definitely get some lesson out of this so it is not a true story you have already read it in line number in the stanza 3 where you get to know that it is not a true story what is a legend you have already uh, note noted in the uh, discussion part and why is this poem called a legend because it is again a story a kind of folk tale folk uh, lore which is uh, transferred or you can say it is passed on from one generation to another generation in verbal form and with the uh, with the coming up of the uh, written texts right it is good that we are able to even read these scripts now the last question to you is that the entire story that you have read you have to write it in 10 sentences right it is not a difficult wo work you can easily sit think rethink just recollect uh, whatever discussions we had and you can write it in the form of a short story just in 10 sentences right so i hope you all enjoyed the poem with this our class gets over thank you so much have a nice day